Hey, this is Ryan Witt, defense attorney in Washington State. We try to put these videos out to help and educate people, and we do that based on what calls and emails come in with questions. And when we get enough of a, a certain topic, we'll go ahead and drop a video like this. And the topic here is gonna be, can I get a DUI on private property in the state of Washington? So you can help us get more of this type of information out by go ahead and liking and subscribing to our channel and watch the video. Okay, so the question was, can you get a DUI on private property in the state of Washington? Now to answer that question, you have to look to the statute, which is the rules of the road or RCW 4661. And when you look at that, it indicates the rules pertaining to operating a motor vehicle refer exclusively to operation upon highways. So it certainly makes it look like you would have to be on a highway. Now the way in, in another chapter highways are defined is this doesn't have to be exactly a freeway or a highway. It's really anything maintained by the state or the city or the county. It's, it's something that isn't a private road. And if it's a private road, meaning your own neighborhood or HOA or a parking lot or whatever, that, that's a private road, not a highway. I digress, but the statute certainly makes it look like it has to be on a highway. Uh, if you read a little further in the statute, it does carve out an exception for RCW 46 uh, 500 through 525. And that indicates for DUIs, reckless driving, physical control, vehicular homicide, those shall apply on highways and elsewhere throughout the state. So and elsewhere makes it sound like anywhere else throughout the state. So, I mean, you know, highway and everywhere else. So it certainly makes it now look like you can get one anywhere throughout the state. Now to make matters more complicated, we have to overlay what seems like a clear rule with a decision from the Washington Supreme Court uh, from the 1980s. And what they challenged in that case was a young man was on his parents' farm. He's driving an unlicensed, I think, pickup truck, and he's just basically out in their pasture uh, doing burnouts and tearing around, doing nothing but you know tearing up the field. Cops got involved, he was arrested for DUI, hence the appeal and, and hence this uh, case law that stems from state versus day. Now what they looked at, um, I think the court looked at, was it really justifiable to, or does it further the intent of the statute to go after a person where they're really just ripping around on their own property? And what they come up with in the, in the analysis isn't really necessarily a decision on, is it private property? They look differently. They look at it differently. And it's, so I guess the question I'm asking kind of begs to be asked a different way. It's not, is it on private property? Is it on private property or property such that the individual doesn't pose any risk to the community? Uh, you know, for let me make an example. If you are at the AMPM parking lot, which is clearly private property and you're intoxicated, should that be treated the same as if you're on a hundred acre, 500 acre farm in Eastern Washington and you're, you know, like, like the other case, doing burnouts in a pickup, or maybe you're just, you know, driving heavy uh, farm equipment and that's what you do. You've had a couple beers as you're running the harvester. I don't know, but do you treat those differently? And the court came down on this one and said, yeah, you do treat it differently. You're not, is that parking lot or wherever you're driving something where there's immediate egress onto highways or roads of the state? Um, like in the example out of the state versus day case, it's an unlicensed truck, He's in like a fenced field. There's really no way, and he's not showing any intention about going out onto the roads. Where in the AMPM example, you know, clearly it probably looks like that person's gonna get their Doritos and Slurpee and back out and, and be back on the road. So it doesn't come down to whether or not it's private property. It comes out, it comes down to whether there's like immediate egress and this, um, I guess, view that the person's gonna go onto the road. So I think in getting this far and developing this level of understanding, we have to acknowledge that we now have to redefine the question. It's not really, can you get a DUI on private property? It's, does the driver on private property pose a risk to the community? Like, is there a high likelihood that that driver who's on private property is gonna leave and go out onto a highway? So I think the ways you analyze it is, is the piece of property that's private really large? Are they driving a motor vehicle that maybe is just licensed to drive on that property? Like for example, if it's a farm, is this something that's registered for farm use? Uh, does the person routinely take that onto the road? Another good question to be, is this property all fenced in? Or 
is the, is the public invited onto this property? That could cause a risk to the community. But if you're looking, you know, if you're looking at it like the day case, you're out in a field, it's a farm, it's private, it's fenced in, there isn't really a good way of egress. I think the analysis could be that that person doesn't pose a risk to the community. So if the person's on private property and they don't pose a risk to the community, that person can probably beat the DUI charge. Now, don't take this to be legal advice. You should go talk to a licensed defense attorney in your area, and hopefully they'll kind of shed more light on the local culture and, and how you'd go about such a defense. We really enjoy doing these videos, want to get this information out to as many people as we can. If you like this video, it helps us grow this by, by liking the channel or liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And I'll leave you with one last hypothetical that you can put in the comments. Let's just say, you're gonna take your car to the drag strip over the weekend. So midweek, you're out in your driveway, you got the car on, you're kind of fiddling with the carburetor, getting everything dialed in, and you're having a couple beers at the same time. No intention to go drive, but your car is on, you're near a road, gives you kind of a gray area, so let me know what you think. Yes, for if the person's DUI, or no, are they safely off the roadway? And thank you for watching.